The chess universe is a board of 64 black and white squares. When you sit down to play, just make sure to position the board so that each player has a dark square in their lower left corner. The columns that go up and down have letters from A to H, and the horizontal rows are done in numbers 1 to 8. That just makes it easier to record your moves. Then later, you can look back to see if you made any big mistakes. So there are 32 pieces in total, 16 on each side. If you're playing white, you go first. The entire point of the game is to force the opponent's king into a trap he can't escape from. That's called checkmate. Yeah, sounds simple enough, but first you have to get to him. That's something his loyal subjects don't want you to do. They'll be working on protecting their king and going after yours, all while trying to capture as many of your pieces as possible. Capture means the other person's chess piece lands on one of yours. If that happens, your piece is out of the game. Finished. Ta-ta. Bye-bye. So, take a seat opposite a friend and prepare your mind. It's time to meet the team, starting with the pawns. The eight pawns are out in front, so you're probably going to lose some of them early in the game. Not all of them at once, of course, but someone has to kick off the action and challenge the other player to make some daring moves. But don't just throw them away. They can be really useful at blocking off paths and can even protect your king towards the end of the game. Oh, and don't worry too much when you start losing pieces. You'll be capturing plenty of your own. That's just how chess works. Pawns are the only pieces that can't go backward. They can move only one square forward or two squares forward if it's their first move of the game. Still, don't let them fool you. These sneaky little guys can capture even the toughest pieces if you play them right. When a pawn captures one of your friend's pieces, it does it with a skillfully diagonal move instead of just going forward. Also, if your pawn makes it all the way to the other side, you get to replace it with any piece you want. But getting there is not that easy. Two rooks stand in each corner. These guys are pretty chill and can move around a bit more than pawns. They can go forwards, backwards, and sideways, but only if nothing's blocking their way. Rooks can't jump, but if your friend leaves a piece blocking their path, bam! Back in the day, these guys looked more like chariots. <laughs> you can see why. Right next to the rooks are some horses, or as they like to be called, knights. They move in an L-shaped pattern in any direction they want. Two jumps in one direction and one jump in the other. They're the only ones who can jump over other pieces, yours or your friend's. They can't land on a square if you've already got a piece there, but if your friend leaves a piece unguarded, bam again! <laughs> After the brave and bouncy knights come the bishops. They stand on either side of the queen and king, ready to do whatever it takes to protect them. Bishops move diagonally any direction that's open. One moves around only on the black squares, the other only on the white. And now the piece you've been waiting for, Her Majesty the Queen! The white queen starts on a light square, and the black queen starts on a dark square. She's the most powerful piece on the board, with the combined powers of a rook and a bishop. But as always, with great power comes… everybody wanting a piece of you. She's right at the top of your friend's most wanted list. If your friend captures your queen, it'll be way easier to go after the mighty king. Then it's all over. Kings can only move one square at a time, like a pawn. But they can move in any direction, even diagonally. He captures pieces too, but it's way more tricky. Remember that checkmate thing from the beginning? Mm. When one of your friend's pieces gets into a position where they could capture the king, it's called check. Then you've only got a couple of options. Use one of your pieces to capture the piece that's threatening your king. Move your king out of harm's way, or move one of your pieces in front of your king to protect him. Once his majesty is in check and you can't do any of those options, the game's over. It's checkmate. You can push your king so he falls over if you want to be extra dramatic. One way to avoid trouble early on in the game is to do a move called castling. If you have some open space between your rook and king, you can make them swap places, uh, sort of. You move your king two squares in the rook's direction, and the rook shuffles right past him. 
it's the only time you can move two pieces at once. Castling can happen either to the left or to the right. You can only do it if you haven't moved those pieces yet, and as long as you don't pass through a check from any of your friend's pieces. Stalemate is something that rarely happens, but it's good to be prepared for it. It just means that you can't make any moves with any of your pieces. Your king can't move anywhere, but he's safe where he is. He isn't in check. If that happens, no one wins, and it's kind of a letdown. Take a few seconds and try to figure out what that would look like. Another situation where no one wins is when a game ends in a tie. It usually happens when you and your friend only have your kings left and you're just chasing each other endlessly around the board. It might be time to start a new game. But hey, if you get to that point, you're probably not a beginner anymore. And now to answer the question everyone's been waiting for. What's this Queen's Gambit thing everybody's talking about? Only one of the oldest opening moves in the history of chess. Mm-hmm. It consists of three simple moves. So, white pawn moves to d4, black pawn moves to d5, and another white pawn moves to c4. Your queen is now more vulnerable, and you'll probably lose the c4 pawn. But the upside? You get control of the center of the board. If you're more of an active player who likes to take the initiative, go for it. Now, take some time to practice a couple of queen's gambit variations. See what moves you could make if you were playing white or black. The great thing about playing alone is that you'll always win. Awesome! But also, you'll lose every time. A good chess game has three main stages. The opening. Every player sends out their scouts onto the board, trying to build a strategy and see what kind of player they're up against. Phase 2 begins when the players start going after each other, capturing more and more powerful pieces. Phase 3 is the final stage, crunch time. There are way fewer pieces on the board, usually less than half, and the king starts to move around a lot more. The goal isn't just to corner the king into checkmate. You want to capture as many of the other guy's pieces as you can so your path to the king is more open. The more mobile your pieces are, the more powerful they are. But be careful! Good players love to leave traps for you to fall right into. They might leave a piece all alone somewhere. When you capture it with your queen, they just laugh and capture your queen. That's why chess is so popular and hard. You have to plan your path to success, but also try to predict the other guy's strategy. Whew, what a brain workout! So, ready to invite a friend for a game and show him what you learned? Cool. 